Thanks. So I think um, Chesley's story is one of um, trying to build relationships through digital ways with youth and then plant a church. Um, Aaron's reminding us of the what's out there in the digital world, in the virtual world that's been really exposed much more because of COVID perhaps, because now we can't gather as much and we have more time and also is reminding us some about some of the staggering statistics of social media usage and time online and so forth. Uh, I remember hearing someone say, if you really think that you can influence people with one hour on Sunday um, when they're spending three hours a day on social media and online, you're crazy. You're absolutely crazy. It's never gonna do anything of any significant difference in their lives. Um, that's, that's, uh, that's depressing. <laughs> And also, um, we hope that the Holy Spirit does a little bit more too as we gather together in, and um, in our relationships and in our time together as churches. Let me just tell you a little bit about our story. Um, and it's just a story of how we've been wrestling with digital ministry and digital tools. Um, I think we went through what almost every church did at the beginning. I wasn't really here at that time. I was working with the Colossian Forum. Uh, but early on, um, there was a sense of denial, right, that this would last a couple of weeks and we'd be back on board. And it was a little bit of a break, a, you know, a, a gimme sabbatical for everybody for a couple of weeks. So we'll try to bridge the time with a couple of interesting things. We'll try some things. I think our staff tried a sort of live stream conversation between pastors that really flopped um, and didn't go very far. But then soon we kind of moved to the phase of, well, uh, it's going to be a while, but let's bargain a little bit. <laughs> let's go into the bargaining stage. So we'll do a little bit better effort in hopes that six weeks from now we'll be right back to normal. That didn't happen. Um, so I think that then we moved into some of the anger phase provided by the culture around us with people talking about masks and vaccines. And um, there was an election to throw, throw into things, so we dealt with anger and then depression and fatigue, and then adaptation or ad adapting in the end. Um, and the real question is, what do we adapt to? Where, where do we get? It's like grieving anything, right? Um, where, do you end, where you end up, where you move to eventually, is never really one place, but it's not the same place that you began in. There's a new territory, and those who grieve well begin to see the possibilities of, of the new situation they're in, as difficult as it may be. Um, and so we as a church have been, been really tracking, what did we do? What have we done that we feel has worked? And what, what can we do, given the tools that we have digitally as we move ahead? And one of the key questions at the heart of it has to do with discipleship and relationship. So we have all these people watching our posted video service, which we edit on Sunday morning. We know people are watching from different places in the world. We've had people ask to join our church from other places in the country. But what does that mean? Um, and who are they? And how do we know if they are really following Christ or they're just wanting to be a part of what they think we're doing? Um, we don't know the answer to those questions yet, but we're moving to ask, how can we find out? How can we engage? What does it mean to develop a relationship with people if they connect with you through online resources? How do you follow up? How do you connect people together in small groups? How do you connect people physically, locally with others, um, which are important questions to us? That engagement pathway is something that's really on our minds, but we don't have the answers. We're at that place of asking the questions moving towards researching and finding answers and experimenting with what we come up with uh, as we move ahead. I think one thing that we've discovered along the way, though, is that there are times in which digital versions of what we do, for instance, small groups in particular, can actually work better. Um, we've had some experiences. I did, actually, when I worked for the Colossian Forum, we were, we were an organization that trained small group leaders to do in-person small groups that meant 10 times for 90-minute sessions. And to have that suddenly taken away was really, really hard on our basic ministry model. But um, I thought we should try an online group. 
So we invited people from across the country to be a part of an online group. And one of the strange things I discovered after leading lots of other groups myself in person was that people, several people in the group, tended to be more honest and vulnerable through Zoom than they were in person. Um, they were able, with a structured time, you could also manage the time better in conversations. Um, but people were more open about their questions, about questioning others, about talking about what they believed and where they struggled than they were in person. That was a big surprise to me. And we, we discovered, I think, through Alpha moving online, Jenna, uh, Pastor Jenna uh, Barber, who's on our staff, led a, an Alpha ministry group that met completely through Zoom um, last spring, right? <clears throat> and discovered there the same thing, that there were several occasions which people who had serious questions about God and about faith were able to, to express those questions and have conversations at a deeper level than what has happened in the in-person group. Um, that hasn't led us to say, oh, let's drop all the physical stuff and go digital, but rather to say, okay, wait a minute, maybe this is just a tool uh, and resource for us actually to have in our toolkit of things to do to engage people with the gospel and to disciple them and bring them along even deeper. So we're starting to look for those occasions that we can use it and where it does, in fact, perhaps work better than in-person opportunities or work as a supplement. If it's true, for instance, that we're heading for another strong wave of Delta variant or, I mean, the Greek alphabet goes on for quite a bit farther than Delta, I still remember. Um, maybe we're going to be going into seasons of pulling back and heading in. Maybe it would be helpful for us to learn ways to adapt for seasons to engage both in small groups, fellowships, and also uh, as a congregation. So we're asking those questions and trying to stay, um, stay flexible. One of the words that John Brown, our uh, lead pastor, uses right now comes from, I think it was a uh, New York Times editorial written by a rabbi who talked about this being an opportunity, actually, the great upheaval of COVID being an opportunity for us to get our serious questions about faith asked and answered, and, or not answered necessarily, but asked and discussed and out there. It's an opportunity for people of faith. Um, and the key is whether we're going to be nimble enough for the moment. And that's the, that's the word that this rabbi used, nimble. It's been the theme word of some of our recent uh, meetings as staff. How can we be nimble in this moment to still preach the gospel, to proclaim it, to live it out, and to uh, grow in it? So that's where we're at as a congregation. I think we're about up on our time, and we're going to turn it over to the groups at this point. Okay, so you have your questions, um, and you're turned loose.